welcome to my sewing room. I am so happy that you've come to be with us today because we have the most beautiful techniques and ideas to show you. Now, one of the things we're going to share with you is how much fun it is to do lovely linens, decorative linens. And this linen has a beautiful, beautiful machine embroidered flower in the middle. Absolute elegance is what I would call this. Are you ready? I think this may be one of the most beautiful suits, if not the most beautiful linen suit I've ever seen in my life. See the decorative stitching around the collar, around the lapels, and coming down to the bottom, just pure, pure elegance with the machine embroidery here and here, done in very pale colors, uh, the pinks and the pinks and the pale, pale lavenders. Now then, for the little man in your life, and who does, we have two little, three little grandsons and they would love this. This uh, little suit is made out of khaki. It has really neat airplanes and rainbows. And look here, a little choo-choo train. Machine embroidery, of course, that goes all the way around. I went to dinner in Dallas recently with a dear friend of mine who happened to be wearing an Escada suit. Of course, I've never owned an Escada, but I surely do think they're pretty. This velveteen top looks so much like the Escada suit. These beautiful, tiny, machine-embroidered roses all over this fabric, and then there is a little pearl in the middle of each one, and top, uh, below that is a really beautiful sh black chiffon skirt. Beautiful heirloom sewing and machine embroidery can be just as wonderful on really elegant quilts. Decorative stitching up here, stippling, more stippling, stippling again, and a beautiful uh, machine embroidery in the middle. Absolute elegance in these lovely pinks and greens. To share with you a lot of really exciting techniques, I have invited my friend Chris Tryon. Chris is the Assistant Education Director for ELNA USA. And Chris, we're so happy that you're going to be with us. And now I'm going to go over to the technique boards. Chris has some really beautiful techniques for using a regular needle, not a wing needle, for attaching laces to fabrics. First of all, you do, using a magic purple pen or, or Dixon pencil, whatever you want to use, you draw your line on your fabric. Next, come in and pin the lace, lining it up with that one line. So one line is all you need, not two. The next step would be to stitch all up and down one side of the lace, and this is a really pretty decorative stitch that Chris has used. Then you can see how beautiful it is. You've stitched one side and you've stitched the other side. It's so pretty with that wonderful thread and the decorative stitch. Now, take your scissors, and we like these, uh, as Chris says, kitty scissors. They're, they have a blunt toe on them, and it makes it easier not to, not to cut the lace, but that's okay. If you cut the lace, you can fix, uh, fix it too. But using the scissors, trim away from behind. And then here is how pretty it is. It looks kind of like peekaboo because now then you can see behind your beautiful lace. This is another stitch which is almost like a sculpting stitch which Chris has used. Actually, it looks like it has little French knots about every so often. I think it's beautiful. And then here is another stitch which is really like machine embroidery that Chris has used to attach the lace. Now, since I've told you so much about my friend Chris, I'm going to come over here and, and welcome her. And Chris, we're so glad that you came to the show today. Thank you, Martha. It's so nice to be here today. Um, I'm going to show you how to use lace application using a couple of different techniques than what a lot of people are used to. The first thing I'm going to do is I've marked my fabric with a purple marker, and I'm just going to go ahead and place a few, few pins to pin my lace down. And what I'm doing is I'm lining my header up against with the purple marking. Then I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I've chosen the feather stitch. I'm going to use a stitch width of 2.5 and a stitch length of 2.0. And I've used rayon sulky embroidery thread in the needle and I'm using a regular size needle. And do you use the same thread in the bobbin also? I'm using a 60 weight lighter weight bobbin thread okay. in the bobbin. Um, the other thing I've done is I've chosen a fabric called Essex which is a linen cotton blend and the reason that I use this is because it's a little more stable and I find that I don't have to starch my fabric and my lace. Now, if you're using a less stable fabric, though, would you go ahead and put stabilizer under there? This, this, in this application, no, I okay. didn't. If I were okay. doing something like embroidery, yes, I would place okay. a stabilizer underneath. 
what I'm doing is I am lining my foot up against the header of my lace and I'm just stitching down one side. When I have the one side complete, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my fabric off and cut my threads and I'm going to come down the other side. Since I can't turn this stitch over, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my fabric over to the right and again line the marking up on my foot with the header of the lace and I'm going to stitch. Then I'm going to come down this whole side and when I'm complete, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to cut the fabric away from the lace in the back so we can have the peekaboo look. I love it. Wait. Oh, it just looks like it's all finished <laughs> when you do the peekaboo, doesn't it? Yes. Now I'm going to change my scissors. I'm going to go to my blunt cut scissors and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and line it up with the back side of my fabric, my stitching, and I'm going to cut. Okay. When I have the one side cut, I'm going to go to the second side so I can cut both sides away. And again, I'm going to cut. And then I have my completed side and I have the peekaboo look. Okay, oh, that is wonderful. Now, are there ever any other stitches that you use uh, for attaching the lace? Yes, there are. There are some lovely stitches. I never thought of using anything until I started playing with my decorative stitches. I found this lovely decorative stitch, which is a leaf stitch. And what I have done is I have lined up the one portion of the leaf with the header of the lace and stitched down the other side. And then again, you can use such stitches as a pin stitch and then the lovely sculpture stitch that you showed. Do you straight stitch it first when you do one of the decorative stitches? No. Or is that, that is not necessary? No. All mm -mm. right. No, I just chose my decorative stitch and it was a leaf stitch and what I did was I just lined up again my foot with the header of my lace and I've stitched one side will go into the header of the lace and one side will appear on the top of the fabric. Is it a little bit more difficult to cut away from behind? Go ahead and keep yes, it so pretty, Yes, so it's a little bit more difficult you need to be a little bit more precise that's where the kitty scissors comes in really handy. I'll tell you, you notice I wear a pair of kitty scissors on, <laughs> on me at all times because I don't want to cut the lace. And I find when that the sharp points do cut the lace, and these usually, yeah. you know, help a little bit. Now, I still cut the lace sometimes, Chris. <laughs> oh, I have that problem too, trust me. <laughs> I definitely have that problem. Isn't so that? So you can really see, I'm just stitching down. Them. And it just adds um, a little bit more elegance, and in a sense, it almost adds to the lace itself. You think it's a portion of the lace. That kind of gorgeous embroidery makes me think I'm in a museum somewhere, because I, actually, a long time ago, ladies really did use the hand embroidery yeah. to embellish, so I just love the machine embroidery. You probably know that already. <laughs> Me too. That mm -hmm. is beautiful. I won't have to get my glasses on so I can see. Yeah. Oh. And what I'm doing oh. is I'm just lining the foot up against okay. with the lace. Okay. And if you can see, the one portion of the stitch it appears on the top of the header and the other portion goes into the header. Well, Chris, that is absolutely beautiful. And I thank you so very much oh, for being here to share. Now, Chris is not going home yet. As a matter of fact, she has a beautiful home decorating project for you. has brought some fabulous things to share with you that are home decorative items. I want to give you a little bit closer look at this really magnificent uh, tablecloth which has the almost translucent fabric in the middle and this absolutely beautiful machine embroidery. I mean that is pretty. And those of you that have the wonderful machines just please do go ahead and use the machine embroidery on linens. Now this is one of the most elegant pillows I've ever seen in my whole life. It is tied on the ends with beautiful organza ties. Two rows of really elegant lace stitched down with that pretty little feather stitch Chris showed you a few minutes ago. And I love the way she put her initials CT with little roses and stems, all from the embroidery machine, of course, right in the middle. Now, Chris, there's also a pretty, pretty wedding handkerchief here. And since, jo since Joanna is planning a wedding next year, I, I especially am thinking about we have to have that pretty wedding handkerchief. And this one has a little pink flower, all of it done on the built-in embroidery machine. Now, some of you were thinking, well, I certainly would like to have some of those $1,000 pillowcases, but of course, none of us could afford those, and that's the truth, and certainly I couldn't either. 
but you can make a pillowcase that is even prettier than those thousand dollar ones. This one has made out of a Swiss Batiste. It has the lace, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, one, six beautiful double needle pin tucks, another row of lace, and then some edging on the end. And see how pretty it is. It's long enough to really drip off your pillow. This is another magnificent pillow uh, used for, on a bed to decorate a bed. And it's, it's a damask fabric with uh, tatting around the edge. Here's what I want you to see in the middle, though. There are three of these beautiful designs done on the embroidery machine. And they're so delicate. It's, it's just white on white, so it almost just disappears in the beautiful damask. Chris, these are so elegant. Now, what do you have to share with us? Oh, my, another <laughs> elegant piece. <Yes. laughs> uh, what I'm going to show you is we're going to do what we call a lampshade cover. Um, what I've done is I've done a, a embroidery, machine embroidery in the center. If you don't have a machine that does machine embroidery, you certainly could do hand embroidery. But this is just a little faster. A little. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a bit faster, actually. Um, then I've got uh, a row of lace that I've applied with traditional zigzag, a very small zigzag. Then I did another row of lace spacing it out using what we call a sculpture or quilting stitch, which you showed earlier in the lace application. Then I used the feather stitch on another row of, it, la another row of lace, which I actually showed you the technique earlier. And then lastly, I used the pin stitch to apply the lace edging. But now I'm going to show you actually how I went about doing all of this. Drop my pencil. Excuse me. Um, the first thing that I did was I cut my piece of fabric to the size that I wanted to cover my lampshade. Then what you're going to need to do. Is that linen again, that wonderful The look. cotton S. I yes. love that cotton mm -hmm. linen blend. Yeah, and it makes it really nice for home deck because it stands up a little bit better to wear in usage and washing. So what I've done is I've marked the center of my fabric where I'm going to emplace my embroidery design. Now that I've stitched out my embroidery design, I need to mark where I want to put my lace. So what I've done is I've measured out from the outside edge of my embroidery two inches. And since I've applied three rows of lace, of lace um, insertion, I want to mark three rows all the way around with two inches. Okay. Then the last step, next step that I did, was I actually pinned all of this lace. This took forever. <laughs> Trust me, I was wondering if I was going to run out of pins. You know, you have to have lots of <laughs> pins when you do heirloom sewing, yes, I can assure exactly. you. <laughs> so what I've done is, you can see I've done my first, second, third, and then my lace edging. But I'm going to show you how I pinned and actually how I did my mitered corners. Because oh, I think good. mitered corners, a lot of people... Um, don't know how to do them. So what you're going to do is, you're just going to go ahead and again line your header up with the marking and I'm going to go ahead and pin. Okay. Now when I come to the mitered corner, this is like why I like to draw my right angles, is just take your pin and mark it right at that right angle, take your, your lace, fold it up, and then you're going to fold it back on its edge and now you have a perfectly mitered corner. That, well that looked easy enough to me. And then you pin it in. Then and what do you do when you attach those two over there? The two pieces? Well I cut them. Just, just cut them. Just go ahead and, and, just turn and cut one them. Under. Yes. That's what I do too. Or sometimes I'll just leave them on top and then ha go and hand stitch it down. Mm -hmm. I still mm -hmm. do do some hand stitching. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and just cut this. Okay. And then I'm going to pin it. And then we're going to go to our sewing machine and I'm going to attach some lace. Do you usually pin all of those rows before you start stitching? Yes, I do. Well, I just have them really <laughs> even that way. Yeah. Well, it, it, for me it helps to see the whole design because I may want to change something. It's a little easier to go ahead if I've made um, a design change to go ahead and unpin something than, than rather than having to rip a stitch out. It's much easier. This time I've chosen the pin stitch. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a stitch width of 2.5 and a stitch length of 2.0. And I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch the lace edging. Oops. 
Now, if you used a really light Swiss Batiste, would you need a stabilizer on um, that? They, yes. Then I think I would um, go ahead and either starch my lace or starch my fabric. Mm -hmm. I usually just iron my lace to make it nice and flat and straight. I find that personally that when I starch lace, I end up stretching it out. So part of it will be nice and flat and then the other part of it will have little ripples in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line the vertical portion of the stitch, the backwards and forward motion up with the lace header and the horizontal portion of the stitch will go into the lace header. And again, the marking on the foot, the little triangle, I can use as my guide point for that stitch. And I'm going to stitch along. Now I'm not using a wing needle. I'm just using a regular size 40 needle. And I've also, again, used the rayon embroidery thread in the needle and 60 weight thread in the bobbin. It just kind of adds a little um, air of elegance to the stitching, a little more interest to it. Chris, that is absolutely a beautiful project. And you know what? I've seen in a lot of the Victorian type magazines, mm -hmm. those covers actually used over a lampshade. Yes. So I think they're becoming very much in vogue yes. again. Yes. And now I have a beautiful doll dress for you. When Joanna was a little girl, she used to love beautiful robes and gowns for her spend the night parties. This one on our little doll reminds me so much. I just think, oh goodness me, Joanna has to be a little girl again because this is a beautiful robe and gown. It's very much like the ones we used to have for Joanna. On the bodice of the robe, we've used lace edging to make the bodice. And let me kind of open up the robe and let you see the top of the gown here. So let me put my hands in the way. See, the gown is so, the, it's so pretty. It's also used lace edging stitched together. And then the robe and the gown have beautiful diamonds at the bottom using lace edging. Now, this is kind of unusual, and that's what I want to share with you how what to do when you want to use lace edging up on a garment. Okay, now lace edging is not that difficult to work with. It's just a little bit different, and that's a wonderful technique, I believe, for me to share. As you can see here, I have stitched together one, two, three pieces of lace edging. I've just stitched them together. I haven't stitched anything to the, to the bodice. I put them on top of the fabric for the under bodice, trace off my pattern piece, and then go around and stitch right on top of the tracing, and then trim it away, and then treat it just like a regular uh, piece of fabric instead of the lace that's on top of the fabric. Now, this is something fun, too. I need a wide piece of lace to make this little V at the bottom, and I didn't really have a wide piece of lace. So I stitched together two pieces of lace edging. Now, how do you make a nice V right here in the middle? How, how do I make a miter? Well, I'll tell you. I put a pin at the top, and I'm going to fold it back on itself, and I'm going to put a pin at the bottom bisecting that miter. As a matter of fact, here's my bisect right down here. And then I'm going to open it up, and I will have a perfect miter folded in. Now, some of you are going to say, ho, ho, hang on, Martha. You can say perfect miter all you want to, but that thing is sticking out. You see this, little, this is the edge of the lace. That doesn't look too pretty, does it? Well, this is the principle of mush it. Anytime you have a little something sticking out like that, just simply be careful mush it under, it's going to all be cut away later anyway, and then go up underneath it and pin it because I'm going to zigzag, and you're not going to be able to see it. As a matter of fact, if I could press that, it'd almost go away right now, but I don't have an iron with me, so let me just pin it. Uh, I'm pinning it right to the board, and I don't think I'm going to be able to sew through this board, not today anyway. All right, I'll pick this one up, and now the this answer, the question now is, how do you sew... Um, this is a scalloped lace rather than a straight lace, so how do I attach it? Well, it's just real easy. You simply do a reasonably narrow zigzag, and you don't have to go around in that scallopy part at all. Well, goodness me, hang on, let me get the pin out. I thought I had it slipped back behind enough, but I didn't. All right, here we go. Now, you just simply zigzag right down the edge of that scalloped edge. Let me pull this piece of lace back. Now you can see it. Let me let you zigzag right down the edge of that scalloped edge. It does not have to be right along the scallops. You can zigzag straight. That is no problem whatsoever. But you just zigzag down 
And here we go with a couple more pins I'll need to remove. All right, here we go. And that's all there is to working with a scallop lace in place of a lace insertion. Then these other two lines I have here are lines that we're going to do the insertion on. So I'll go back to the board over here and I'll take the lace insertion. Remember how Chris showed you that you take the lace insertion and stitch it down? I will miter up here at the top. Now after the, after the uh, stitch together piece is down, let me show you one more time how you do a miter at the top, just like we did with that double wide lace. All right, pin at the top, pin at the bottom, fold it back on itself, remove the pin that goes through two layers right there and bring it all the way around and once more I have a little bit of this sticking out remember the principle of mush it there we go just mush it right under pretend like it isn't there because a little bit later we're going to cut away that mush anyway and now I have a wonderful antique technique for you I'm completely fascinated by the scallops or scallops, whichever way you pronounce them, on this antique blouse. There is a really sweet little panel that comes down to cover up the buttons, but this is really what I wanted to share with you. Do you see the bottom of this blouse? Just has little scallops that go around and they have gathered lace attached to it. That would be a great technique to use on a garment today. Here's how it would be done. First of all, trace your scallops out and by the way, we use dotted Swiss too because that garment was dotted Swiss. Trace your scallops out on your fabric. Then come along and pull on your lace edging. Remember it has a gathering thread built into it? Come along and pull you some gathers in using the uh, thread built into the French edging and pin your gathers along your scallop. Very simple next step. Guess what you do then? Just simply come in here, zigzag it down. That's all there is to it. And then to make those scallops really appear to be scallops, and here I'll put this under here and pretend like we haven't cut it away. There we go. After zigzagging, then go in and just trim along. And of course, I like to keep my handy little scissors right here to come in just trim underneath there. That's all there is to it. And this is the finished look when you have your scallops with the little narrow gathered lace edging on the bottom. Isn't that a cute way to finish a cuff or a skirt. Won't you come along with me to my attic to see another beautiful antique? This blouse is absolutely beautiful and really it's very elegantly simple. I call this blouse tux and hemstitch blouse and I think you'll see why. The beautiful collar has a number of tucks. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tucks. And then hem stitching is at the top of the collar and at the bottom. This pretty panel of eyelet, this would be a Swiss embroidery, is in the middle. But do you see the hem stitching around it and the beautiful tucks over here, the release tucks on this side? Absolutely tiny and wonderful little buttons. Once again, going down in between two rows of hem stitching. Wide tucks. Very rarely do I see tucks this wide in antique clothes, but then again, that's what part of the fun is, finding things you haven't seen before. Here's another tuck, that same width. And on the sleeves, oh, they are so pretty. They paid so much attention to the sleeves and to the back. There are two more tucks, more tucks on the cuff, and then a really pretty ruffle at the bottom. As you love to see, and I do too, what surprise there is on the backs of these beautiful blouses. This time, pearl buttons and buttonholes, more release tucks. The wider tucks go all the way around. Then at the bottom, we've seen this several times lately, and I guess they were in a lot of clothes, the eyes, sort of heavy eyes, for the skirt to have the hooks and to hold the blouse in the skirt so it, would not, it wouldn't slip out. I am so glad that you came to be with me in my sewing room today. I've enjoyed it and I hope you have. Won't you join me again next time?